Hi, I'm Graham, and welcome back to Man vs Film. This is going to be a top 10 of movies that you can watch right now on Amazon Prime UK for the month of October 2018. And at that number one spot is an absolutely fantastic horror movie that I've just recently discovered. But we'll get to that. Let's get started with number 10, The Commuter. Michael McCauley has taken the commuter train to New York for the past 10 years, but unexpectedly things take a turn for the worse when one of his daily journeys, the cryptic passenger Joanna, makes Michael a generous and tempting offer to locate a single commuter or face grave consequences. Is this a sick joke or is this indeed a serious situation? As Michael races against the clock to solve this wicked conundrum. Liam Neeson in old man action mode. I love these movies, they're never fantastic, but I do get a lot of enjoyment out of them. Non-stop, taking those kind of things, run all night, I love all these kind of movies. They're never great. And like that, this one is never great either. And it gets to a rather unbelievable final third act. But seeing Neeson go through the motions as a man in turmoil, trying to figure out what he should do before ultimately doing the right and just thing is a fun movie to watch. And I have a lot of fun with this action movie. Number nine, Molly's Game. Molly Bloom, a beautiful young Olympic class skier, ran the world's most exclusive high stakes poker game for a decade before being arrested in the middle of the night by 17 FBI agents wielding automatic weapons. Her players include Hollywood royalty, sports stars, business titans, and finally, unbeknownst to her, the Russian mob. Jessica Chastain is one of the best actresses working today, and that's just a fact. Uh, Molly's Game, written and directed by Aaron Sorkin, is all about this uh, woman who creates these high stake games of poker. Now you don't need to know a thing about poker to get on with this movie because it is explained to you throughout the process and it is rather an endearing story. I don't think it's fully a great masterpiece as I would hoped but it's got lots of those sort of can trademarks as you know fantastic dialogue and scenes that just are delightful to listen to the conversations play out. It's a story that's rather interesting and kind of unbelievable as well and worth your time. Number eight, Demolition Man. Frozen in 1996, Simon Phoenix, a convicted crime lord, is revived for a parole hearing well into the 21st century. Revived into a society free from crime, Phoenix resumes his murderous rampage and no one can stop him. John Spartan, the police officer who captured Phoenix in 96, has also been cryogenically frozen, this time for a crime he did not commit. He is unfrozen to capture his arch nemesis. Completely silly, but absolutely fantastic at the same time. You have Wesley Snipes and Sylvester Stallone. Snipes is a bad guy and he is delightful, chewing up the scenery as this deliciously colourful, violent, megalomaniacal maniac. And John Spartan eh, by St Stallone is the kind of good guy, by the numbers hero, who we know is at the end going to win the day. Also in this movie is a young Sandra Bullock who is pretty good as well, but it's just a fun 90s movie that has a weird premise but it just kind of works and the action is fun and it really gets by on its lead characters. Snipes and Stallone are fantastic together. This is one of these kind of movies that I go back to every now and again and I just absolutely love it. Number 7, Suicide Squad. A team of the world's most dangerous incarcerated supervillains provide them with the most powerful arsenal at the government's disposal and send them off on a mission to defeat an enigmatic, insuperable entity. Suicide Squad. I saw it at the cinema. I kind of liked it. I didn't despise it like everybody else. I felt the movie had some flaws. I wasn't really engaged with the characters. We get several introductions to each character, but it has this jukebox of greatest hit songs that play throughout the movie. It's got some fun action set pieces and it's definitely a switch off the brain, get out the popcorn and just enjoy the heck out of this anti-superhero movie. Number six, The One. There is not one universe, but there are many, a multiverse. Supposing you are just one person, there are many other versions of you on these other universes. There are ways to travel, but only the police MVA can travel for procedures. Gabriel Yulo is a former agent who killed another version of himself in self-defense and it made the other versions of him stronger, which sent him on a spree to kill all of his various personalities throughout the multiverse to become the one. Jet Li made a, a few Americanized movies uh, in the early 2000s. The one was one of them. I hadn't seen it since it first came out and I went back to it remembering some dodgy CGI, um, Jason Statham with hair, which is never a good thing, and uh, not really too much memorable other than that, but I found a movie that I did enjoy. The action set pieces are fun. I really do like Jet Li as an actor. I find he's got that, that X factor, that charisma that I do like to watch. 
and he's badass when he's doing these fight scenes like they do here and they don't really rest too much in the plot because there's not really much there they just fire it forward with more and more action set pieces and it's fun and for 90 minutes you can just switch off and enjoy a great action movie number five shoot him up a pregnant woman runs by pursued by a man with a gun with reluctance, the man at the bus stop rescues her and assists with the baby's delivery, while additional pursuers fire at them, including the gang's particularly nasty leader, an intuitive man named Hertz. Our hero, known only as Smith, determines to save the child and find out why Hertz wants the baby dead. Someone had this crazy idea of just making a movie one big long shootout. That's what Shoot 'em Up is, and it doesn't try to hide the fact that that's what it is. It doesn't try to pull the wool over your eyes by pretending to have really rich characters or a really intense storyline. It doesn't matter. It's about these two guys facing off in a hail of bullets. It is action-centric, and I love it because it just aims for one thing, and it hits the bullseye every single time. Shoot 'em Up is a tremendous, if kind of empty, piece of action cinema. Number four, this is the end. Six Los Angeles celebrities are stuck in James Franco's house after a series of devastating events just destroyed the city. Inside, the group would not only have to face with the apocalypse, but with themselves. Caricatured versions of these actors as they play themselves in this movie is ridiculously funny, it shouldn't work, and yet somehow it's fantastic. I think it's all down to Danny McBride's antagonistic performance in this movie as he just riles everybody up, but it's so much fun, and every time I go back to it, I'm like, I'm sure it was just a one-time hit for me, but no, I love it again and again. I think it's tremendous work, really funny. Number three, Final Girl. A cute, shy young girl is new to town and looks to be the perfect, easily duped target for a group of boys who want to use her as the final test in their murder game. Little do they know, she is skilled in the areas they cannot imagine and has a test of her own she decides to pursue. A rather crazy movie, Final Girl, is it doesn't follow the typical tropes. In fact, it gives you all the information at the start about how the movie is going to play out and then proceeds to follow those beats. But it doesn't rob it of any of its strength. It's a limited budget with a limited cast and limited locations, but it does really well with its action set pieces. I was really interested in Abigail Breslin, the lead character. I thought she was fun. And the battle against the four guys is as you expect. And it's a movie that don't really know why I like it as much, but I want to recommend it to see if other people do as well. Number two, Tag. As the sole survivor of a horrendous and rather mysterious accident, Mitsuku, a Japanese teenager, can safely say that her day has got off to a bad start. It seems that an unstoppable force of nature, a doomed field trip, and a strange case of amnesia can easily coexist in a bizarre parallel universe. Tag is crazy. I, there's no other words for it. It is just a crazy movie. I had no idea what I was getting into. I knew it was Sion Sono's movie and I knew that, that that meant something. He's a pretty prolific and exciting filmmaker and within the first five minutes of this I had taken away any preconceptions I had. I had literally no idea where it could go and how it was going to evolve the story after the five minute mark because something so crazy, so practical effect heavy and just fantastic that I don't want to spoil it for you happens within the first five minutes of this movie and it just gets stranger from there. It seems to be punctuated by these extremely violent uh, scenes that become more prolific throughout the movie and then interspersed as these really great character moments as the characters connect and develop and just bond in ways that I haven't seen done before in this type of movie and in the end it gives you a kind of reasonable if not weird answer as to why everything has happened the way it's happened. If you like your Asian crazy cinema, Tag is definitely going to tick all the boxes that you're looking for. Number one, Hell House LLC. Five years after an unexplained malfunction causes the death of 15 tour goers and the staff on the opening night of a Halloween haunted house tour, a documentary crew travels back to the scene of the tragedy to find out what really happened. Here we have it, the movie I promised at the start of this video. Hell House LLC came out in 2015. It's been about, I've seen the cover several times and I finally clicked on it. It is a found footage movie which, you know, makes you roll your eyes. It's kind of low budget. Again, it's another warning sign. And it's a story about um, a haunted house. They have these cameras set up. There is, seems to be a bad history to this house that they've set up the haunted house in. And it is a very familiar story, but for all that it does that's familiar and tropey, it 
does it fantastically well. This is a movie that gives you really good characters to latch onto and a terrific sense of atmosphere that has the hairs in the back of the neck standing up. You put out the lights, put this movie on, turn the volume up and it will creep you the hell out, especially in the month of October. I think this is a must watch and I really want to know what you think of this. So come back, let me know in the comment box your thoughts on this film particularly. So there we have my 10 suggestions. I'd love to know if there's anything that I missed out or something that you would suggest. Let me know in the comment box below if there's anything you would like to see on my list or what you thought about it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time on Man Vs Film.